Hey there everybody, Paller here bringing you another Planetside 2 for Dummies tutorial. Uh, this video is going to be part 5 in the series. I believe I'm going to get two more videos out of it, maybe three, depending on what all I need to cover. Uh, this video is going to be called, uh, what am I, what is it going to be? It's going to go over little things that tend to help the the enjoyment of the game. They're, they're small little convenience items uh, that are worth pointing out uh, and help out quite a bit in the game when you know how to use them effectively. The first one was gone over in the tutorial, uh, but they really didn't go in depth quite enough to fully understand it, uh, and that is the Q marking of enemies. So, if you have an enemy underneath your crosshair and you hit the Q button, you'll see it marks them up with that arrow icon on their head. Enemy now, this icon here. does several you things. One, you can probably hear my guy, he's yelling out over comms that there's an enemy located. So it tells friendlies that Hostile there's enemies nearby. Here. It also puts that red triangle on for anybody within, I believe, 100 yards of you, or within audio distance of you, they will hear that, that they will see that triangle. So it helps to mark the enemy on the, for the, for allies also. The third thing it does is if they die with that triangle over their head from your mark, you do get a little bit of XP. You get a spot assist, spot assist bonus, which I believe it's only like 20 XP, but hey, it's better than nothing. The second thing is also the Q button, that's what I call the Q ret reticle menu. So if I aim over a friendly here, like this guy, and hold down the Q button, it pulls up this different uh, reticle menu where I got several options and I can go through these with my mouse. I can add him as friend, invite to squad, ignore slash mute, which I'd like to do to this guy because he's just spamming all kinds of noise, and or I can send him a message. This will also work on enemies, I can't show it here because I'm in the VR room, but you can uh, mouse over enemies at the same time, hold down Q, and it'll bring up this, this reticle also with some other options. I don't remember what they are entirely. I believe there's one for a report player, uh, there's one for ignore player, and something else. But that is what the, if you hold down Q while you're aiming at somebody. Now this is easier said than done, as people don't like to stand still, and you have to hold it on the target for about three seconds before it'll register. Uh, it's not just a quick tap and hold. Uh, you have to keep your cursor over the target for two to three seconds. Uh, so it's, it's not always the easiest thing to pull off while you're while you're running around. The next menu I'm going to cover is the V menu. This is the uh, the local broadcast menu. So if you hit the V button you're going to bring up this menu of ten options here. Uh, these things are when you push the corresponding button then within there you're going to call out one of these several things. Now the primary ones you're going to use are one through four or two through th two for two through four. Uh, and those are requesting heals, uh, requesting ammo, or repair. Uh, I also use the thank you a little bit for when somebody reses you or whatever in a good, in a bad zone or whatever, you can say thanks for them. Uh, so it's just a nice thing to do. But that that's a handy item for when you need ammo or repairs. You can spam that a little bit. Uh, and what will also happen is if anybody's around you and you hit that, like if I hit V2, it'll put a medical cross over my head. So any medics in the area, if they look at me, they'll see, hey, I need medical aid and everything. So that is the V. The next is the rate of fire selector. Uh, so the game does come with weapons that all have different rates of fire. Right now I have what I have equipped. The, uh, the Gauss Rifle S. This guy is a three rate of fire different weapon. So it has the standard full auto. If I hit the Bravo button, it has the two round burst. And if I hit Bravo again, it has single round fire. Um, a lot of people like spray and pray in this game, especially as TR, that's what we do. Uh, obviously as NC though, it's much more important to put your rounds on target, because your weapons fire slower, have greater kick, but do more damage. So, oh, excuse me. In order to, uh, depending on the class you're playing, the weapon you're using, you, sometimes burst mode or single round is actually much, much better. Uh, where th certain weapons, you know, you're going to drop a target in five rounds. So it's better just to make sure you, you control your fire, and that can help right there. So that's the Bravo button, or B. Let's see, free cursor. So, the other thing you might have seen in some of my videos if you watch, you'll, every once in a while you'll see my mouse cursor come up, well, even though I'm running around and I use that to like highlight things in my menu, or my map and everything. That is done by hitting the Alt button. So if I hit the Alt button, it frees my mouse from my curse, my crosshairs, and allows me to move it around. If I hit it again, it puts it right back on the crosshairs. 
Mostly what I use this for is when I am in an outfit, a squad, or a platoon. You're going to get additional tabs up here in the upper over your chat window. Uh, and that way if you don't want to see all of general chat, you can click which tab you want and you only get that specific chat channel. Uh, and that's a nice thing to do. For the most part though, it's not really all that needed. It's just uh, a little convenience item. Okay, let's real quick, we'll go over the uh, the engineers and the medic. Let's first, I am a medic, so we'll resupply. So, say you're running around as a medic and you see some enemy or some friendlies that have taken damage and they need to be healed. Uh, you might be run wondering how to do that. That is done with an extra item that you have. If you mouse wheel through here, you'll see right now it's item number three. I believe for a medic it will always be number three, but I might be mistaken. Uh, if you get like an underslung grenade launcher or something, it could bump this to four. Uh, but it's almost always going to be item number three. So if we hit one and a three, it's going to pull out this odd looking little gun here. Uh, and this is used for both resing and healing friendlies. If a friendly has damage on him, you walk up to him, you left click and aim it at him, you will heal him up by generating out a beam on there. If they're dead on the ground, you walk up to their corpse and left click on him, you will res them up. Now this only works if they have not started to change classes or something. Sometimes you will find friendlies on the ground that are dead, uh, and you go over them and you mouse and nothing happens. What's happened is they're somewhere, they're changing out their class loadouts or something, and they can no longer be rest. So with those type of people, don't dwell on them, just move on and get out of the way. Uh, it's, it's not going to work there. There is, so, there is a little bit of a, there is sometimes where you can get confused by that. Now, as a medic, though, there is one thing that you cannot heal with this gun, and that is yourself. Uh, there's two different ways to heal yourself. Well, technically three. Let's come back over here real quick, and we'll go into utility. There are the medical kits. Uh, the restoration kit, the medical kit. This one is a syringe that heals you over time for more health. I believe it takes eight seconds to heal, but it'll heal almost a full health bar. You can be down to, like, one little sliver, and it'll take you back to about 90% 90, 90 health. It's not 100%, but it's close to it. This one is an instantaneous amount of health, but it does not heal as much. So this will give you about 50% 50 of your health right away. Uh, so these are a utility way that you can heal yourself. And these are actually usable by, for any class. If you unlock them for one class, they're available for all classes. So you can see they're, they're right there. The other thing that medics can do is they have the nano region device. And that is, I'm going to use the alt menu, their little extra extra button down here uh, is this AOE f regen field around them. It will heal any any friendlies close to you and it'll also heal yourself. Uh, let's see if I can take some fall damage. I'm not sure if I can do that in the VR room. Uh, but real quick, so I'm going to activate that by hitting the F button. And you'll see this green glow around me and you'll look down at that icon. The, the bar around it was going down a little bit. And that was the regen was activated. That didn't hurt at all. I'm not getting high enough. Um, anyway, so if you're hurt as a medic, you're going to want to activate that in order to heal yourself up. Uh, it does work pretty darn well. I, I recommend it quite a bit. Uh, and it's actually one of the... So the two things when you first play a medic, I always spec out first is my heal gun, because with each upgrade of it, you reduce how long it takes to res somebody, and you also res them with full health, or with more health. So at max level, you'll res somebody in about half a second, it's less than one second, and they come back with 100% health. So you can really go through and res quite a few people with it. Where the default first level one gun, it takes about three seconds, and they only come back with like 30% health. So you're out, of, out in the open getting shot at a lot more, uh, and it's not quite as effective. So that's the first thing I upgrade. The second one is my field that I upgrade, because at max level, it increases how quickly this regenerates. It also increases how much it heals. Uh, so it's a nice thing to have. So those are the first two things I spec out with on my my medic. Let's see if this will give me fall damage if I jump. There we go. Ah, but only took my shield down though. Didn't actually hurt my health. Anyway, if I take fall damage or get shot or whatever, I can hit that F button and that will heal me back up. Now the other one, very similar to the medic, but it's worth showing real quick. Come on. Is the engineer. The engineer can be used to repair vehicles, max units, and all that fun stuff, and that is done with a separate gun, just like the medic, where it's normally going to be number three, it might be number four, depending on your type of weapon loadouts, and that is this gun right here. Uh, this gun will repair vehicles, repair maxes, repair uh, air uh, tower turrets, air turrets, all those type things. 
Uh, do keep in mind though, it will only work on living maxes, so if a friendly max dies, it must first be rezzed with a medic, and then once it's rezzed, an engineer can repair it. Uh, and it's very much the same way you walk up to it, you focus at it, and you hold down the left mouse button, uh, and it will slowly repair it, you'll get a little cursor that'll come up and rotate around. I will be doing a video that'll show a little bit of gameplay later on, and you'll see both of this in there, I'll try to point it out during that time. Uh, but those are the how you repair and how you heal. It's these extra guns that are normally on number three for the respective classes. Let's see. The next thing I want to show is the resources. So, come over here and go to Max. And you'll see, it doesn't actually show here because I'm in the uh, the VR training room. Let's go back to the main main game. So, spawning tanks, spawning Maxes, spawning aircraft all use up... To, they, they trigger two different things. One, they trigger a cooldown on them. The cooldown can be reduced by using um, CERT points to reduce the cooldown. The other thing it does is it uses a certain amount of resources. These resources are gained throughout playing the game depending on the territory you control. Uh, so let's run up here to the terminal. And you'll see for a max it's going to cost me right here 350 infantry points. Where the other classes, there's none of that symbol there. It doesn't cost me anything at all. Uh, but this is uh, this is the infantry points. Now the infantry points, you can look down here. They're located here. So we have aerospace, which is the aircraft, mechanized, and infantry. Right now we're maxed out. You can have a max of 750 of each point at any one time. Uh, this will also, by spawning it, it'll create a cooldown. I don't think it shows the cooldown anywhere. But if I come in here to the max certs and the passive system, which is the acquisition timer. So this first one will reduce the acquisition by 30 seconds. At max level, it reduces it by 300 seconds. Uh, it makes it about a five minute cooldown, I believe, at max level. Uh, so that, that, that's a nice thing to have. But even if your cooldown is off and you can spawn it, if you don't have the infantry points in order to, uh, to spawn it, it doesn't matter. We'll come over here and we'll look at vehicles real quick. A flash costs 100 mechanized. Harasser 300, Sunderer 400, Lightning 300, and Vanguard 450. So you get an idea of just how much they cost. So you can't spawn two Vanguards right in a row, even if you have the best, um, the best cooldown timers. Uh, you have to make sure you have enough mechanized points in order to spawn it. So you're going to ask yourself, how do you get these points? Well, these points are acquired depending on the territory you control. So I'm going to hit M and I'm going to open up the map here. And on the right hand side, I'm going to go to this middle of the filters tab. And you'll see here, here is aerospace, mechanized, and infantry. So we are down here. If we look at it, controlling these two zones gives us, f or this one, which zone is it? That's a very bad location for that icon because the, the amp station gives 30. So this, this, logging camp gives 15 aerospace. The ant station gives 30 aerospace. Uh, the deep core platinum mine gives 15 aerospace. This guy gives three mechanized. So if you have connected territory to this, you're going to gain resources from that every five minutes, I believe. It might be every three minutes. Uh, you're going to get a, an inflow depending on what you have. Right now, you can see we're pretty much cut off, so we're not going to be getting all that much. We're only going to be getting, uh, looks like 20 infantry points, and like 12, what do we got, 3, 6, 9, 10, oh, so there's 10, so 19 mechanized and so forth, uh, whatever Tumas is. Tumas is also mechanized, 30. Actually, so we're getting a good bit of mechanized until we lose Tumas, which we're going to do, it looks like. 128, 127, oh, no, we're, we're, we're defending Tumas right now. But those are the points, that's how you acquire them. There's nothing you can actually do, although if you do know you're like, all right, we're running light on infantry points, you can pick targets of infantry importance in order to gain more infantry points and so forth. Uh, but that's what that is, this filter here will turn that on and off. And they will just be deposited automatically. Squad, de uh, squad deploy will be last. The last, or two things, two things more to cover real quick. So first is going to be those points can also be used for resupplying certain items. For example, grenades. If we come in here to grenades, grenades, each grenade costs 45 infantry points. You can't just throw grenades every single time. Eventually you will run out of infantry points and need to uh, go ahead and wait for your timer to come back up and everything. 
Uh, but what I'm looking to show you right now is the auto resupply button. So what this will do is whenever you get down to your last grenade, if there's zero grenades and you have enough infantry points, the system will automatically purchase you one so your next spawn will have a single grenade. Uh, this is a good thing to turn on for every single item so you don't pull a certain class and then not have a grenade on it or not have a certain item. There's different things that cost different infantry. Um, C4 has cost 100 and can auto be auto resupplied. The medical kits cost 75 and everything. But if you buy one of these and they're on your loadout, it's a pretty good idea to turn this auto resupply on them for them so you don't run out. Keep in mind, there are some loadouts, mainly for, I believe it's the engineer, where they can carry, whoops, wrong thing. So they can get like a tank mines and then they can get a bandolier that allow them to carry additional tank mines. This will only resupply one. So if you're gonna, if you can carry three or four tank mines, you need to manually purchase those, and those would be done with the plus button right here. Or if we come back here, we can we can click the resupply. Unfortunately, I don't have the C4 unlocked, so I can't show you it. But that is how it's done. It will only buy the minimum amount of one. It won't keep three, four, five of them stocked up. Uh, but it is a good thing to know, a good thing to have. Last thing is going to be real quick, a better way to get into action than the uh, instant action button that they, they promote and everything. And that's joining a squad and then squad deploying. This is at least going to put you in with friendlies in some type of an organized manner. Uh, and I just find it to work overall better. In order to do this, first thing we're going to open up our menu. And we're going to go to social. Then under squad here, we're looking, these squads are all open. Uh, they can be filtered several different ways up here. You can see the continent they're on. These two squads are on Indar. This squad's on Amorish. Uh, these are 7 of 12, 7 of 12, 10 of 12. So that individual squad. Now this squad might be part of a platoon. We can click this platoon button. These are. So this is Alpha Squad of a larger platoon. Uh, this is Alpha Squad of a larger platoon also. And this is Bravo Squad of a larger platoon. Now these squads, since they have open spots, let's see if we can refresh it and see. Now, there, now there's additional ones. There is no refresh button. You have to actually click out and click back in uh, to know. So say we want to join, we'll go ahead and join this squad right here. We'll just hit join. Nope, they're on there. Where, where are we at? I forgot which map I'm on. Map, 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 map. We're on Amrish. Okay. Let's go back to the squads. So let's join one of the ones on Amrish, the second one. We'll go ahead and we'll hit join yeah, now. Yeah, now this will bring us in right here. From here we can go over and we can hit squad deploy. Now a couple of these just fed me at this point, and that's fine. Just turning that down in case they, they go nuts and start cursing and everything. Now this squad deploy will go ahead and drop us in right on top of the squad that we're in. So you can go ahead and see, we'll open up M, and here we're in with our entire friendly squad moving forward through Amorish. Uh, this way you don't come into a battle by yourself and everything, you come in with your squad teams. Keep in mind what this does do is, it can only be used every five minutes. You can see right now it is on cooldown, so you can't just constantly reuse this. You gotta go ahead and you can only use it once every five minutes. Uh, but that's a good way to, once you find a squad, you join a squad, or if you're running with your outfit and you join join a squad within your outfit, to quickly get into combat with them without trying to track them down. It'll take you right to them, which is very, very handy. Uh, so I believe that's going to be it for this stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But this has been Power. Thanks for watching.